UFC 261, we have Kamaru Usman versus Jorge Masvidal 2. This is going to be a stacked, stacked main card. We have three title fights on this main card. We're definitely looking forward to breaking down these fights for you. Welcome to Boxing MMA Picks. Again, we're back with another one, giving you UFC breakdown, UFC fight-by-fight -fight analysis, letting you know which fights are worth the odds, which fights you want to avoid, uh, underdog picks that are perhaps worth a shot. And hey, if you stick around to the end, you might even get some parlay action from us really looking at some juicy payouts from that perspective. We talked about the prelims already. We're going to get to the main card again, Kamaru Usman versus Jorge Masvidal 2 being the main events of that one. Super stacked main card. We have five fights on this. And let's get right into fight number one. We have Anthony Smith versus Jimmy Crute. I'll start with my pick. I'm going Jimmy Crute all the way on this one. And then I'll break down the fighters. When I look at Anthony Smith, of course, I mean, we know that he's coming off of a win versus Devin Clark. Um, you know, realistically, though, he's sort of one of those fighters where you got to ask yourself if he's done at this point. I mean, I know he's only 33 years old, but this is his 51st professional fight coming up. It's a lot of damage on the body. And he's facing a, a, a young contender who, who has a lot to offer. Uh, when I look at Anthony Smith, I mean, decent, still to this day, still has decent movement around the octagon, um, you know, has a decent right hand down the middle, usually happens after a jab, so really watch out for that, especially that he uses his jab pretty actively. Um, his stand-up overall is still, to this day, pretty stiff. We know that he's going to be a grappling and, and Brazilian jiu-jitsu specialist, of course, doesn't really... And, and that's, that actually works against him, right? Because he doesn't really prioritize trying to get off of his back when his opponent's on top. And that's obviously not the best for trying to win rounds. I think he's, he might be used to five-round fights. So in a three-round fight where he really gives up the back and sort of gives up the round, he already finds himself sort of fighting a, behind the eight ball. So I don't really like his approach to fights. I don't really like his IQ in fights and, you know, I mean, take that grappling for, for, for what you may, right? On top of that, I don't think he has the best striking defense. That front leg stays exposed. I mean, we've seen a lot of people use the calf kick on him. Uh, I'll, I'll go right into Jimmy Crude at this point. I like him. He, he's solid. I mean, he's a pretty solid contender. I think he's 25 years old, if I'm not mistaken. So you can kind of tell what the UFC is doing here. Anthony Smith, a top 10 lightweight in the world. Jimmy Crude just outside of the top 10. Jimmy Crude at 25 years old at 12 and one. You got to think that the UFC is kind of setting this one up for Jimmy Crude to win. Uh, Jimmy Crude has really good wrestling, good takedowns, good body lock. He stays on top of it. Um, you know, chain wrestling, good grappling as well, right? He's a BJJ brown belt, um, not black belt credit, but brown belt nonetheless. Very decent striking. We, we saw that in his last fight. Let's just pull that one up here. He really showed that in the modescas Bakuskas fight. And I had Bakuskas winning that one. So, um, you know, that, that kind of tells you. I didn't really expect that performance on the feet from Jimmy Crude. And as a result, I'm a fan of his, of his stand-up now, right? I mean, a good calf kick, willing to engage, trade shots. Uh, he, 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 he has a pretty tight guard, keeps the hands up. Good head movement, good counter striker, good technical striker overall. Uh, like I said, I think Jimmy Crude is a pretty solid prospect in this light heavyweight division. Um, you know, he won his last two fights. I think he has the advantage on the feet. I think he has the wrestling advantage. Yes, Smith has the grappling advantage, but Smith, again, has that tendency to stay on his back. I think Crude is going to have moments where he's winning these rounds on top. And again, Crude has that brown belt. So you have to assume, at the very least, that he won't put himself in any glaringly obvious um, you know, situations for Anthony Smith to take advantage of. So I like, I like Crute all the way on this one, and he's going to be my pick. Okay, so uh, the Anthony Smith is a step up here, obviously, from who he's been fighting. The UFC's given him, uh, I'm sorry, this is a step up for uh, Jimmy Crute, who he's been fighting here uh, by the UFC, giving him Anthony Smith. So uh, regardless where Anthony Smith is at, this guy can knock you out. This guy can finish you. He has the power if, if, um, if you make a mistake. He can definitely turn the fight around. So this is a really tough fight for Jimmy Crude here. He's going to definitely have to um, be careful here because he's fighting a real veteran. 
uh, a tall fighter who doesn't really use his height, but he still has that height. And I think this is a tough fight. I like Jimmy Crute to win the fight only because I believe that Anthony Smith um, kind of welcomes takedowns. He's not going to really defend takedowns. So Jimmy Crute, who has a really good top game, um, he's going to be able to play. He's going to be able to play there. And it's only three rounds. So I like Jimmy Crute here because he's going to be able to get to the ground. And um, I think that's where he's going to make a lot of his money here. So I like Jimmy Crute to win this fight. Sounds good. Sounds like we're in agreement there. Let's move on to fight number two, to a fight that is impossible to call. This is by far the hardest fight on the card. Stay away, stay away, stay away. We have Uriah Hall versus Chris Weidman. This is actually a rematch in their own right. They fought in 2010. Chris Weidman won that fight, but, I mean, you can't really use that fight in any way, shape, or form to assess how this one's going to go. Um, I mean, where do, where do I start, right? Where do I start? Weidman in his last fight versus Omari Akhmedov showed a little bit of a improved, almost like a new style of stand-up in some ways. Obviously, we know has a very close relationship with Stephen Wonderboy Thompson um, and, and showed, a, showed a little bit of that. Uh, it was very interesting to watch. Um, you know, he has a little bit better striking defense, a little bit of better distance control, a little bit of better in and out movement. I kind of hesitate as I say that, though, because that's still Chris Weidman on the feet, somebody who leaves himself very exposed, somebody who can definitely get hit. We know that he's going to be a wrestler. We know that he's a wrestler in the purest sense. We know that he's going to go after that single leg specifically. Um, although, you know, Uriah Hall, you know, he's shown respectable takedown defense. Again, if we look at statistics, 69% takedown defense from Uriah Hall. We know he's been in the UFC forever. So, you know, that is a true 69% rather than a small sample size, 69%. And, you know, he's, Uriah Hall, I'm talking about here, he's shown times where the takedown defense is really good. And then he's shown times where you can get him down. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens in this fight, right? Um, Uriah Hall still has an effective style of stand-up. Um, you know, guys that beat Hall are guys that put that pressure on him on the feet. Chris Weidman obviously is not that. And again, like I said, this is a coin flip. This is, this is a coin flip in the truest sense, except we're referring to two fighters that are now a little bit older, which adds even more of a coin flip element to it. I, I really don't know which direction to go in in this one. Um, I think you can make a case for, for either fighter. They're both 36 years old. They're both, uh, you know, kind of on their, their, their last legs in their UFC careers. You put a gun to my head, I still don't know who to pick. So I'm going to say, uh, man, this is tough. I'm, I'm going to go with Uriah Hall. I'm going to go with Uriah Hall. And the reason I'm going to go with Uriah Hall is because that's still Chris Weidman on the feet. And Chris Weidman is not somebody who's going to push pace. Chris Weidman is not somebody who is going to have a, a, a huge cardio tank. And I think if Uriah Hall stops the first takedown or two, Chris Weidman is definitely in trouble. Yeah, I definitely agree uh, that this is a, a tough fight. Um, whereas we got a striker, a grappler. These are always the hardest fights to, to make a decision on. Because the, it, you really don't know who's going to be able to implement their style. But whatever style is implemented, they're going to win that style. So this is hard fight. They're both 36. They fought a long time ago. And um, back in 2010, in a ring of combat, Chris Weidman finished them in the first round. That's not going to have any impact on, on the fight. They're both completely different fighters. That might give um, Uriah Hall extra motivation um, because of getting knocked out in the first fight, right? So. Again, this is really hard, but when I look at Uriah Hall, I've been following his whole career, and one thing I, re I noticed about this guy is he has a real hard time, if you go down his record with grapplers, his last fight with a grappler, Antonio uh, Carlos Jr., um, that was the last grappler, and in my opinion, he lost that fight, where he, he got a, a gifted decision by the judges, uh, he, he got beat by grapplers, Gerard Musassi on the ground, Derek Brunson uh, knocked him out. Um, but these are guys that he was he had to worry about the takedowns. He lost to Rafael Natal, who was able to utilize takedowns. John Howard, Kevin Gastelum. So these are the guys that are beating him, guys that can put him on the ground. And 
And I believe Weidman still has it. I know Weidman's last fight versus Akhmedov, he was able to get five takedowns in that fight. And Akhmedov was able to get four. So when you've seen Weidman in the second, third round, he was getting gassed. But that's because that was, that was a, a grappling match. There was a lot of grappling and a lot of resistance. Whenever Weidman tried to take him down, Akhmedov, who was also a wrestler, is, is, is resisting. And that tires all Weidman, right? So he's going to be fighting a guy, Uriah Hall, who's not going to give him that resistance when, when, when he goes for a takedown. And in the Akhmedov fight, even though he was gassed, he still pulled off a takedown in that third round. And fighting a, a guy like Uriah Hall, that might, that, 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 that's all you might need to win that round. So, again, I'm not putting any coin down on this fight. I, it's hard to bet on Chris Weidman. It's hard for me to even pick him here because all it takes is one punch and then he's, and he's finished. He's been finished many times already in the UFC. But I'm going to go with Chris Weidman. I think this is a favorable matchup for him. I think if he can get a win here against a good fighter, it's, it's against a fighter that, that has no wrestling. So I'm going to go Chris Weidman here to, to win this fight. Sounds good. Let's move on to fight number three. Could be a main event on any other card. Of course, we have Bullet Valentina Shevchenko versus Jessica Andraj. I'm going to try to keep my analysis short on this one, and I am going to admit I am a little biased. Valentina is probably my favorite fighter in the UFC, and I think there's no way that she loses this one. So I guess why don't you kind of give them a, a little bit more of an analysis here, um, and, and let's kind of give them some perspective on this. How do you feel? Yeah, when you look at Andrade, you got to give her respect because she definitely has um, really good grappling, really strong. If she grabs you, you're going down. It doesn't matter who you are um, as a female fighter. So she definitely has the advantage when it comes to the grappling, uh, when it comes to the wrestling. Valentina, as we know, is really well-rounded, pound for pound, one of the best female fighters of all time, can strike. She has grappling herself. I think this is a, I think this is a fight Valentina should win, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if Jessica comes in here and wins the fight. If this was a three-round fight, I, I would probably take a chance at the underdog. But because it's a five-round fight, where Andrade is going to have to get her wrestling going, and for her to do that for five rounds, is going to be really hard to win three of those five rounds with a wrestling-heavy attack against Shevchenko. It could work for a round, it could work for two, but I doubt it works for three, right? So and this is five rounds. So I'm going to go Shevchenko here. I think the five rounds favors her style that even if she faces adversity early on, which, which could happen, as the fight goes on, Kareem's going to rise to the top, right? And Valentina's going to be able to pick her apart, and Andrade's not going to be able to get her wrestling going. So I like, I like her in this spot because it's a five-round fight that she should win. Yeah, and, and I think that's, that's probably the best way to put it, you know, the five-round aspect of it. I think some of these women, you know, do have a shot against Valentina, um, from a strength perspective, uh, as good as Valentina is, Jessica Andrade will be the stronger fighter physically um, and, and, and will be able to, like you said, grab a hold of her and probably take her down. And, and, and she probably will get that takedown. Um, you know, Valentina, she's not completely bulletproof. Um, you know, she does have opportunities where you can sort of land points. But again, in a championship fight where this is five rounds, Valentina's style um, really is made for a five round fight. She can do it all. Um, she can, she can, you know, keep a certain pace where she wins the round without exerting too much energy. And I, I think that's a lot of what we're going to see. I also think that, you know, for Andrade, obviously she is used to, um, you know, main event type of fights and title type of fights in her own right. Um, but I do think that this being a five rounder, her being the challenger that might impact her game plan that might impact her game plan from what she would normally do if she was the champion or if it was a three round fight. Um, so I, I think again, you know, the, the amount of, um, you know, potential different paths that this fight could take versus what Jessica Andrade wants from this. Um, I, I just see Valentina in a good position to, to really seal this one out. You know, maybe she wins four rounds, maybe she wins three rounds, but, um, I think she has the advantage just with the with the length of how long this fight is. So I'm going going bullet bullet Valentina all the way on this one. I might even still bet it at minus four hundred. Um, but uh, you know, don't don't throw too much coin on this one. Co-main event in that case, 
We have Wei Li Zhang versus Thug Rose Nama Yunus. How do you feel about this one? Women's straw weight title fight. I think this is a legit 50 50 fight. I think that when you look at Rose, a, a, a motivated Rose um, is dangerous. And you know, we saw that when she was faced off against Joanna Young Jacek. So I think in this fight, she, I think that motivation is there again. She made some, she made some comments about she's, she's not down with the red or something. Like she's not down or she's on Team USA. I'm not sure the word for word, but that's not, that's not her character. She usually doesn't say much. She usually just stays quiet and does all the talking in the ring. Uh, this is going to be a tough fight because we have two well-rounded female fighters. Who's going to have the striking advantage? We don't know. Who's going to have the power advantage? Wiley Zhang. Who's going to have the grappling advantage? The wrestling advantage? Wiley Zhang. Who's going to have the submission advantage? I don't know. Likely Rose. So this is definitely 50-50. Both fighters have a path to win. But I think this fight's going to come down to um, the power from, um, from Zhang. I think that Wiley Zhang's power is going to be the, the difference here. I think she's going to be able to take it to the ground if she needs to. I don't think Rose has the best takedowns, especially from body locks. And, and that's how Wiley Zhang takes people down. She gets the body lock, Greco Roman style, and, 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 and takes you down that way. So I don't think Rose is, is that good in that spot. And I think Zhang has more advantages. So I think in a close fight, I got to go with the champ. I think that the power is going to be the, the factor here. Height's not going to be an issue. They're pretty close in height. This is both of their time. They're both in their prime. Um, but I like Wiley Zhang. I just think that that power is going to be uh, the deciding factor in this fight. You bring up an important point about Thug Rose. Uh, a motivated Rose is a different Rose, right? I mean, we saw that loss that she suffered via the vicious slam to, to Jessica Andrade um, when Andrade was fighting at 115. Um, or, or, or was Thug Rose at 125? I'm trying to remember that one. No, that was at 115. Yeah, that was, that was for the champ, a championship. But um, they rematched, obviously, the following year, and Doug Rose pulled out a split decision win, right? Uh, we go back to the Joanna fight. She wins that first Joanna fight in, in round one. People kind of say, yeah, obviously she won. They're going to they're gonna respect her for that. But Joanna was still Joanna. So she has the rematch, and then she wins a unanimous decision on that one. No questions asked. She definitely beat Joanna twice in that case. So, you know, a, a, a motivated Rose has that ability to have amazing performances. Um, and that is always going to be an X factor in these type of fights. But to keep my analysis somewhat short on this, you've already mentioned everything that I would mention. Zhang Wei Li, you know, she has more advantages. She has, you know, more opportunity to win. Um, What's going to be interesting is going to see, you know, who has the advantage from the judge's perspective. Does Thug Rose have it as a UFC favorite or does Zhang Wei Li have it as the champ? It's going to be interesting to see um, how that sort of unwritten X factor plays out in this fight. But again, I, I have to go with the quote unquote common sense factor here. And I'm going to have to go with the fighter that has more advantages and that is Zhang Wei Li. So she is also my pick. Um, I personally don't think this is a 50-50 fight. I would, I would comfortably say it's a 60-40 fight in favor of Zhang Wei Li. Um, I would hesitate to say 65-35, so I would maybe a 60-40 fight in that case. But I'm, I'm liking the champ here, and, and I am liking the odds at minus 190. So I might take a stab here at Zhang Wei Li. Um, again, I think she has more paths to victory. She's going to be my pick, and I might even put some dollars on that. In that case, let's move on to our main event of the evening, Kamaru Usman versus Jorge Masvidal 2. Again, this is the rematch. I'm going to break this one down first because I think you'll probably have some, some better commentary than I would on this one. Um, I kind of don't see why this rematch is occurring. I think the UFC just needs a main event to happen. Um, Masvidal lost that first fight and, you know, he uses the reasoning of a short training camp, taking it on short notice. And he did take it on very short notice. So I am going to have to respect that from him, but I don't see a different result with a full training camp. I think that's kind of the storyline that's being sold right now is what if Masvidal has a, a, a full camp 
is Usman going to stand a chance? Uh, yeah, he will. I think we're going to see a lot of the same things that we saw in the first fight. I think this is almost going to be a carbon copy of the first fight. I don't think a full training camp is going to help Jorge Masvidal from stopping those takedowns, from Usman being Usman, chipping away, five-round fight, win it how he wants to win it, and uh, you know, really just pulling this one out with, with relative ease. Obviously, Masvidal has the, the, the puncher's chance, um, especially early in the fight. We've seen Usman get touched on the feet. We've seen Usman kind of be rocked on the feet. Um, Masvidal obviously has a lot better striking than a lot of other people. But again, I don't think he gets it done. Outside of a puncher's chance, I think Usman all the way on this one. Yeah, I don't think I don't think we need much of a breakdown. Just watch the last fight. Um, that excuse, Masvidal, you only had a week uh, to train for Usman. I, I agree. Yeah, your car, your body wasn't really up to par. But as a fighter, you, these guys um, should be in much better shape in between fights. If, if that's an excuse, because this is your job. This is what you do, right? So, and you have to think every fighter in the welterweight division is is already thinking of how can I beat Kamaru Usman, and I'm sure Masvidal has been thinking of this for years. Or already he's been thinking about, thinking about this since Ma- Usman got the title. How am I going to beat this guy? So he's been secretly preparing for this guy. Everybody is secretly preparing for Usman because he's the guy at the top, right? So Usman, though, was preparing for Gilbert Burns. Usman was only preparing for Gilbert Burns. That's who he was matched up with. And then they switched it last minute, obviously, because of the issue with Usman, uh, Burns. Now he got masked up. So, yes, it, it's, it's definitely not helping masked up. We only had a week. But it's not helping Usman that his opponent switch like that, right? So I think this fight's going to be similar. I actually think Usman's going to look better in this fight now that he had, now that he's preparing for Masvidal, um, setting a specific training camp as far as um, game plan goes specifically for Masvidal. I just don't think there's anything he can do to, to kind of get Usman out of there outside of a, a lucky shot, right? So I like Usman here. He's pretty good defensively, and he should be able to get this fight to the ground. And you might get a, I think he might get a finish this time. I think he's going to make it more decisive this time around. Yeah, and I, and I do think he's maybe a little bit motivated to get a finish as well, kind of just shut up, shut up Jorge Masvidal in some way, right? So, um, yeah, I think, again, Usman sort of all the way on this one, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable making that pick, and I'm pretty comfortable not really breaking that down any further. Let's take it to Vegas at that point. So considering the entire card, uh, why don't we maybe give them a few favorite picks? Actually, you know what? Let's go underdogs first. Underdogs, considering the entire card, I don't know if there's anyone from the main card that you want to consider or if you want to just kind of stick to what you had on the uh, prelim video, which, by the way, if you haven't watched that, check out our prelim video right now. I think uh, Chris Weidman and Carl Roberson are some underdogs to look at. Yeah, so Weidman, uh, that, that one's a pick em, technically, so both guys are kind of underdogs, so I'll definitely... Still include that. Carl Robeson, as we talked about before in the prelim video, he's a plus 110. Um, so, you know, two potential underdogs that have a shot there. Um, if I were to take a look at some underdogs here, I don't think I'm really adding anything from the main card. Uh, so I'm going to just sort of stick to, well, I mean, I guess I'm going Uriah Hall, right? That's a pick em, So that would probably be an underdog pick to some degree. But I'm going to kind of stick with what I had in the prelim video. And again, that is Tristan Connolly having probably the best shot to win as an underdog, especially as a plus 187 underdog um, versus Pat Sabatini. Again, I think he's just going to be the bigger fighter there um, and, and maybe have the strength advantage. So why don't we talk about some favorite picks, maybe even a parlay if you have one off the top of your head. But uh, at the right, very we got a few favorite picks. Got- we got Kamaru Usman, we got Valentina Shevchenko, and Jimmy Crew. <laughs> yeah, that that that's exactly what I was thinking. So I think that's a that's it. That's the money. That's the money right there, right? So you look at those three fights. You get plus one thirty four on that. A hundred dollars is going to return two hundred thirty four dollars on that for our bigger betters. Two hundred fifty dollars will return five hundred eighty five. I'm not even going to try to shake the snow globe on this one with, it, with, with any other picks. I think these three are probably the most likely to, you know, perform the way they need to perform. 
Um, and I'm really liking that value there with, with three fights at plus 134. So let's end it off in that case, as usual. Please do all that algorithmic stuff, like our video, comment on our video, subscribe to our channel. Let us know how you feel about our picks. How do you feel about our underdog picks? How do you feel about our favorite picks? What do you think is going to happen in each of these championship fights? Do you think we're going to see any new champions? Um, is that Thug Rose fight, in fact, a 50-50 fight? Let us know how you feel in the comments. Let's have that good banter in there. And of course, we always welcome any sort of questions that you guys have about where you should be putting your money. Put those questions in the comments. We'll do our job in replying to that. And we'll even specify which one of us is, is commenting and, and, and giving you a reply to the question that you have. Again, like I said, all that algorithmic stuff, we would definitely appreciate it. And in the meantime, we appreciate you guys watching this video as well as watching the prelims, assuming you watched that as well. Let's sign off in that case. This is Boxing MMA Picks. He goes by the name of Zahn. I go by the name of Harris. This has been UFC 261, Kamaru Usman versus Jorge Masvidal 2. Let's get this money. Let's do it.